Are you a Mac user struggling to set up your roadcaster for your live stream or podcast? Are you trying to use virtual audio devices and loop back to route your audio and feeling a little lost? In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your roadcaster and use loopback by Rogue Amoeba to route audio from different sources or apps to different virtual channels on your roadcaster so you can control them with the faders. I had a session with a client who he was feeling frustrated with just figuring out how to get everything set up. Everything was sounding perfect in his headphones, but then the audience was hearing something else. The audio he would play would be too loud. He'd turn it down with the fader and it sounded quieter in his headphones, but the audience wasn't hearing it change. Or they'd hear echoes or just any of the things you're probably finding frustrations with yourself. This is what led him to reach out to me for some help. And that call inspired this video because I realized this process, it can be overwhelming, but it really isn't overly complex once we understand how all of the pieces to this puzzle fit together. The short version of this is we'll be using Rogue Amoeba's loopback to route audio from different sources like web browsers, YouTube, Spotify, to virtual audio devices. This gets the audio into our roadcaster, and then we'll use the roadcaster as a mixer, like it was built to do. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go into our system settings and find the sound tab. We want to change our input and output devices to our Rodecaster main multi-track. From there, we want to go to the Rodecaster. And whether you do this with the Rodecaster software or on the Rodecaster itself, it doesn't matter as long as you check these settings and make sure they're correct. So we first thing we want to do is go into device configuration, or if you're on the roadcaster itself, go into your menu, multi-track settings, outputs, and then we want to look for multi-track for recording. I generally recommend that we use the pre-fader setting. What this means is when you record internally to the roadcaster, the faders are not impacting the volume. This is usually best when we're recording internally because we're probably going to be mixing afterwards. The important settings here are for USB 1 output, where we want this set to post fader. And it'll tell you all processing effects and fader positions will be included in multi track. Warning fader positions will determine recording level. That is what we want. We want to be able to control the volumes, the output with the faders for what we're doing. And for USB 1 input, we want to select expanded. And this will only show up if you've already installed the virtual audio devices from Rode. Here's the download link. So if you haven't already installed the virtual device driver, pause the video right now go to this link, download it, and install it, and then come back. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our routing tab, and we want to make sure that we have Bluetooth, USB 1, chat, USB 2, and call me all set to mix minus. The reason for this is when we bring in these audio sources, this is where we're most likely to have a guest, and we don't want the guest hearing themselves echoed back. That's what Mix Minus does. So now let's switch over to Loopback, and before starting, my biggest piece of advice is to try to map out, plan what apps you want to bring into the Roadcaster, basically to control them via a fader and which virtual channel you want to route those apps to. 
the roadcaster gives you four virtual channels. You have music, you have game, you have virtual A, and virtual B. So keep in mind how many faders you have, because if you've got the duo, you have four faders. At least one is being taken up by a mic. If you're using the main roadcaster, I think you have six faders. At least one of them is being taken up by your mic channel. So figure out how many open faders you have that aren't being taken up by mics. And one critical thing to be aware of, and that's if you're using a browser to interact with others, like using Riverside or StreamYard, you're going to need to do things a little bit differently because you want to dedicate one browser for those apps. So if you're using, say, Chrome for StreamYard and Riverside, if you're bringing in audio or video sources from the browser, like if you wanted to play a YouTube video, you want to use a browser that is different from the one you use for your communication software. So if you're using Chrome for Riverside and StreamYard, you'll want to use like Safari or Firefox for playing your YouTube videos. And the reason for that is similar to the Mix Minus. If you're using the same browser to play YouTube, that you're also using for StreamYard or Riverside, you're going to be sending their voice back to them, only it delayed a little bit, and that's not good for them. They're going to complain about an echo. So now that we've got everything planned and planned out, our first step is to create the four virtual channels in loopback that the road provides for us. Okay, so first step, Go down to the bottom left, new virtual device, hit the plus button, and we want to give this a name. So we'll call this something really clear so that when we are looking back at this, we know what this virtual audio device is doing. From there, we want to go, so we'll call this route audio to roadcaster game channel. We can turn off pass through that's only there to, it basically allows this virtual device to show up as an output when you're selecting devices. We're using this as an input, so we don't need to worry about that. The next thing we need to do is to add a monitor. This is how we're routing stuff into the roadcaster. So we select, we hit the plus button to select a monitor device. We select the Roadcaster Duo main multi-track. We will delete these two connectors. You hit press and highlight the top one. Hold down control to select the second and click on the second one and hit delete. That will delete both of them. And if we look at our little cheat sheet here, we can see that if we look over here, we're focused on the outputs. These are the output channels for the Roadcaster. Doesn't matter if you're using the Roadcaster Duo or the Roadcaster Pro 2, they're the same outputs. So 1 and 2 are our main left and right outputs. 3 and 4 are the game. 5 and 6 are music. 7 and 8 are vir virtual A. 9 and 10 are virtual B. So since this channel is routing audio to the game channel, we want to go to inputs or outputs three and four. So we will click and drag from this dot over to channel three, and the same thing with this one over to channel four. We will come back to this in a minute, but first we're going to repeat the process with the other three channels. Okay, so. This one is audio. Wrong device. We want multi track. These are five and six for music or for audio. I'll go back and change that.
Okay, so now we've got the music channel set up. We'll turn off that. This one is virtual A. Turn off pass through. Roadcaster main multi track. Go seven and eight, and then one more. This is for virtual B. Turn off loop back or pass through main multi track. Virtual B is nine and ten. We'll delete these two channels. Okay, so now we have four virtual devices that are set up routing audio into our roadcaster. Game channel, music channel, virtual A, and virtual B. I'm not going to set up all four, but I will walk you through setting up a couple of them. So we'll start with the music channel. The way we add sources to this is you hit the plus button up here. It'll show you all of the running applications listed here. You've got special sources like Finder, VoiceOver, sound effects, and then audio devices, and then virtual audio devices. We're not worrying about any of those. For our purposes here, we're only working with applications. So let's say I want Apple Music. I'll click on that, and it automatically routes it. Let's say we want to also play some videos that are on our computer, and we're using QuickTime for that. That's not open, so up here at the top, we can select Applications. And this will give us our full list of applications, so we can choose ones that aren't up, open and running at the moment. So we'll click on QuickTime Player. So now, let me put my headphones on just to make sure things are working. And if everything's working correctly, we should have audio showing up on channels 5 and 6. And I can mute it with the Roadcaster. And control it with the fader. Okay, so we've got that set up. That is running the way that we want it to. So the next thing we're going to do is set up a channel for, let's say, browser-based audio. For that, we're going to use virtual channel A. And since I use Riverside, I use Chrome for my Riverside sessions. So I don't want to use that for browser-based audio. In this case, I'll use Safari. So I'll select that. It auto-routes everything. So now we've got Safari selected as an audio device or as an input source for the Roadcaster's virtual A channel. So when I go over to Safari and press play, we should hear some music. Again, I can mute it. I can adjust the levels with the fader. And that would be the same thing with any of these other two channels. If you want to add other sources to virtual A, you do the same thing. You just keep adding the apps that you want to play out of that channel. And then to make sure that we've got everything set up, we will return to the roadcaster. And we want to go into 
our audio setup. I've got my mic as input one. I've got music set up to input two or fader two. Virtual A is fader three. And virtual channel B is the fourth fader. I can easily change these sources by drag and dropping. But this is the way I want mine set up. So really, that's about all there is to this. Let's go back to loopback real quick. And let's say I wanted to add my DAWs because I'm giving a live demo of my editing. I would go to virtual channel B. Find Hindenburg. Add that. Maybe add Final Cut Pro, which is not open. And now I can route the video or the audio from Final Cut Pro and Hindenburg both into the roadcaster. They'll be on fader four, so I can adjust the volume as needed. Because raw audio, sometimes it's going to fluctuate in volume. But really, that's all there is to it. We set up the four audio channels or the four virtual channels in loopback, and then we simply add whatever apps to the channel that we want them to appear on. And then you route whatever channels you want to whatever fader you want on your roadcaster. Once you get a setup, it's pretty easy. You don't need to understand what all of the wires in loopback are doing. Just set it up the way I walked you through, and you should be good to go. If you do have some questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. But if you liked and got some value out of this video, give it a like, share it with others you may know, drop some comments, just let me know. Any kind of interaction helps. But other than that, thank you for watching. I hope it helped, and I'll talk to you next time.